What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brandon and today we're going to be doing some welding and fabrication for this Gorilla Lift. Stick around. Sorry about all the wind noise guys, but we're working outside today. So this is what we got. A customer dropped off his trailer and as you can see it's a three inch round top pipe trailer. The customer bought this kit which is called a Gorilla Lift and what it is it's a tailgate assist. This is a real heavy tailgate and it helps to raise the tailgate up and down. You can see how it works. These strap uh, bolt onto the top of the rail. Then it has a cable that comes down and it helps to raise up this tailgate just so it makes it easier on your back. Well, he bought this kit and this kit is designed to go on like round rail like this or even square tube. But the problem being is that the way this lays out is that it ends up getting bolted right down through this area right here right where his tire is and uh, he couldn't have that so he asked if we could make up some sort of spacers that fit on top of this that raise this up to prevent that bolt from going down through that wheel well so that's exactly what we did and I think he's got the right idea because anytime you go to put something square onto something round it's just you know you kind of get that rocking thing it's just probably not the best way of doing it. So what we came up with is I'm gonna take some two inch square tube, which is the same size as this, and we could we could just weld it onto the bottom like this, but then it would leave like these little overhang shelves underneath. So this would just simulate that two inch tube we're gonna make, and then we could just run a bead up underneath there and underneath there. But to make it a little bit better, almost like a saddle, we're gonna cut the bottom out so then it makes a saddle that goes over the pipe. I think it's just gonna work better overall. So we're gonna have to put one at the end, and then you can see there's one that splices in the middle, and then another one at the end. We'll do like a two inch piece there, a four inch, then a two inch, and then we'll do the same thing for the other side. Let's go get those brackets fabricated up. Then we gotta clean off this trailer. We're gonna have to grind it all down smooth, weld those on, then we can get this kit bolted on and get, try this thing out. I think this is gonna work good, guys. I got some two by two square tube, and it's eighth inch wall thickness. So there's a bunch of ways we could cut this. We could use a cutoff disc, we could use a portable bandsaw, we could use a sawzall, we could use a hacksaw. Uh, but I'm going to use my Evolution cutoff saw. This thing works wicked nice for stuff like this. So I think what I'll do is for the ends, I'll come back two inches. And then for the centers, I'll come back four. So we're going to need four at two inches and two at four inches, if that's not confusing. So I'll lay this out, each one. So two, four, six, eight. And I'm using my guide that allows the material to be put on the bias because by cutting it like this, you're going to get more blade life out of the blade versus cutting it flat like this. Let's uh, put some lines on this so we can see them a little bit better. There, now we just know we need to cut, when we make our first cut, we got to cut to this side of the line this side of the line, this side of the line, and then this side of the line so that these all maintain two inches. If we cut to this side of the line, then this piece would be shorter than two inches because we have to allow for the thickness of the blade. So looking at it from my vantage point, you've got the blade coming down. You want the blade cutting just to that side of the line as opposed to over there. Make sense? So each time we slide the material forward, we'll make sure that the line is to the right side of the blade. These are loud, so you definitely want hearing protection. And we'll mark out the centers at four inches. So four, eight. With my pieces all now cut, we technically could weld it onto the trailer like I showed you, but that would just leave a real weird looking void 
rather than have the pipe straddle into this. I just think it would look more professional. So you could cut literally any side, but I figure I'll cut the seam out of the pipe. Most uh, pipe has a seam in it. You can see it on the outside. You see how there's nothing there, but you can see the line right here. So we'll cut that seam out. We'll do it all the same on all of them. Now again, there's a ton of different ways you could do this, but I'm going to use my portable bandsaw to make quick work of this. If you want to see how I built this, it's pretty slick. Uh, just holds a Milwaukee bandsaw. There's a clamp underneath. This comes right off and you, it's portable. You can use it. It's got an outlet up underneath that the saw plugs into and then a switch here to turn it off and on. It's real convenient. And by doing it this way, guys, you have the rounded edge right here, so it's almost like it's pre-beveled. So, so I have to clean these up a little bit with a grinder, get rid of that mill scale, because you want bright and shiny metal when you're welding, especially with MIG welding. And uh, yeah, that'll look good. It's going to work great. So now that I got the inside of this ground all smooth, because it's going to sit inside the pipe rail like this, what I need to do now is I want to smooth off all these edges. You want everything to be, you know, when you touch it, you don't want any sharp edges, because that's the first thing the customer is going to do, is they're going to look specifically at your work. And most people are, you know, they if it looks good and it feels good, it's probably good. You could have a crappy weld, but as long as it looks good and it feels good, that's what they're going to see. So make sure when you're doing stuff for yourself or other people that you take your time. It's these little details that count, is deburring everything. Make sure everything feels good and it's all nice and smooth. So we're going to smooth all the edges. And then this is the area where it's going to get welded, here and here. So I'm going to want to come back a little bit and get it to bright, bare, shiny metal so that we can get a nice, good bead on there. So I'm going to clean these all up and deburr them and get them ready to weld on. And I've measured in on these center from the edge to center is 7 16 same thing there center to edge is 7 16 this one is a little different this one's going to be an inch and 3 8 to center so what I did guys is I took one of the brackets and I measured back 7 16 to center scribed a line then I found the width of this we know that that's uh, two inches then I scribed the line this way. Then I put in a small drill bit in my drill. And then I just clamped a piece of angle iron as a fence running somewhat parallel to the base of the drill and clamped that down to the base of this table. Then I slid this around until the drill bit intersected that perfectly. So this is a jig that'll make these the same size every single time. Then I clamped a little piece of flat bar back to this. So now, just like production line, against that fence, against that stop, and it's right on that line. Then after I drill that, put the next one up. I don't even have to mark it or measure it, and I know it's perfect. So let's start getting these drilled out. For the middle ones, guys, I did something very similar. I'm just not going to use the stop. I found center of this, which is 4 inches long. Made a mark at 2 inches. Then again, back 7 16 from that. Back 7 16 from that. So here, when I'm on my mark, I drew a line on the fence. After I drill this hole, 
I'll move it ahead this much and I'm back on that center there. We got two of these to do. Little tricks like this guys will just help make things more accurate and it'll make it go a lot faster. All right, and then this is the inch and three eight side. So we just got two of those to drill. Then we'll bore these out to half inch. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna step it up a little bit larger for a drill bit and then we'll go right to half inch. That way it'll keep our hole nice and precise. Just a little bit of safety, we'll clamp it down. There we go. And now we're at our final size drill bit. Again, sorry about the wind guys. Hopefully it's not too overbearing, but uh, so here we are. So now we got our brackets made and the kit says to hold the first one back a quarter of an inch from the end. So this is the one that we made an inch and three eighths back. What we got to do is we got to grind all these areas clean on the trailer. So rather than grind more of the trailer finish off than we need to, I'm just going to lay some of these brackets on there and we'll make marks on the trailer as to where this has to be ground. So that looks like about a quarter. We'll kind of center that there. That looks good. And then we'll have to move this one back a little. So that way it's kind of spanning half of them where it needs to go. So that one needs to go right about there. And then that will butt to that. And then the last one goes on like that. So now what I'll do is I'll just make a mark on the trailer and then transfer the same marks onto the other side and we'll grind those and do them the same. No sense making more work for ourselves than we have to make, right guys? So there and down to about like there. Okay, perfect. Same thing here. We'll do there, kind of like that. And this one will kind of go all the way to the back. It's got some rust in there. We want that nice and clean. Then I'll take a measurement on these, you know, to center, to center, and then transfer those marks on the other side. Now it's time to do some grinding. So one thing that the direction said to make sure of that these are straight, but I also need to make sure that these aren't tipped, you know, this way or this way. One way of doing that is I got a level. Then we'll put it on one of the surfaces and turn it on. It's 47 degrees outside. So it's saying it's got a 1.2 degree tip, but we don't really care. So what we're gonna do is press zero. Now that's zeroed it out. So that's making the trailer level. Then we'll bring that level right up here and zero it. And that'll make that perfectly parallel with the trailer. There we go. So now that's saying that that tube is totally in alignment with whatever slope the trailer is at right now. That's absolutely perfect. So now we can just tack that right where it sits. 
And for this project, guys, we're going to be using my Hobart 140. This is just a 120 volt uh, MIG welder. I'm using 30 thousandths Matheson self-shielded wire. Perfect for wind gusts of 40 miles an hour like we're having here today. So, yeah, I'm going to go through. I'll get these brackets all tacked on. I'll double check it last minute. And then we're going to get these uh, tacked on down here. Everything's all bolted up. And, uh, yeah, get these on. Get this thing done. So this guide is done guys. I will take my wire brush and I will wire brush all of those welds. That way it gets them ready for paint. Then I'll take my entire setup and move it on to the other side and the welding for this project will be done and we just gotta hook it up. So here we are on this side guys. This came out good. No issues there whatsoever. I'm happy with it. And I welded it obviously. Did the same thing on the inside also. And now we'll do this side. All right, I'll set my level down again. We'll power it up. It's 59 degrees out now. You can see that the trailer is eight degrees out of uh, level. And so we'll zero it. So now it thinks that the trailer's level, and now we'll set our level up here and level this to zero. There it is. Uh, it's saying the right side's got to go down a little bit, so we just got to tap it over. That could be the wind too causing that. Probably is a little bit of the wind. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. Wind's actually blowing this away. So same where that's where it's got to be guys. So we'll get that tacked on the same way. Hold it in a quarter of an inch from the end. And we can start assembling this. Now we're back over here. Got this side all welded on, and it is thin, 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 thin stuff. 
back here. I blew through a whole bunch. You can probably see it on the inside. You can see it over there, check that out. But this is like paper thin, especially right in this area where I was welding. But we got through it. Came out pretty good guys. So nice and solid. So before we paint everything, I'm gonna put this all together and then we'll paint it very, very last. I wanna make sure that everything is right with this before we go painting stuff. This goes down through there. to read the directions because I think this is probably a certain order that all this stuff has to go together in. So then the next thing they do is they give you these little S hooks so you can stick them in and just try the balance so that you're not just perforating your trailer. And I've determined that this is the right height and then I've just transferred it over onto the side of the trailer because we're going to have to drill a hole through the side and then put a bolt through it. So one of the issues that I had is this trailer came with a spring assist on it, but the spring assist just wasn't powerful enough. It actually had one on this side and one over here. And I called the customer up and I asked if I could experiment by taking these out. And he said, sure, go ahead, just use your best judgment. And whenever I approach things, I try to approach it as though it was my own equipment. So if this was my trailer, this is how I would have done it. Um, so I started by removing one. The issue that I was having is with with no tension on these at all I put the tailgate down and the tailgate was popping back up so you can't have that because when it got to about three-quarter travel the t there was all kinds of weight on the on the uh, gate so I removed one spring that helped and then I put had the tailgate all the way up I put just a slight bit of tension on each side so that these cables have a little bit of tension on them and now the thing works awesome so now it goes all the way down as it should and then i could flick my foot up underneath it and then catch it with my hand like this okay and then just flick it up and it almost does it on its own just like that and now it's all the way up on its own there's really no weight hardly at all on this tailgate and that's what you want it's good on your back and uh you know it's gonna save your back so and lowering it it's gonna keep your feet so they're not getting smashed i guess he's got a real heavy uh john deere tractor that he puts on this and this gate has been beefed up and it's had these skids put on it like these uh, little skid plates so this is a extra heavy um tailgate and i can see without a spring assist how heavy this would be but yeah this works really nice now and just whoop, plop it forward stays up on its own then uh, it just gets pinned over there and it gets another pin over here the next thing we got to do is get rid of these little temporary things and we got to install a bolt that goes right through here that accepts this because you need this all to be in alignment. One of the reasons I built this tool was so that it was serving as a dual purpose. This is a mag drill drill press and we have the perfect project for this today. The way this works generally is that it's just magnetically held to this base right here. Well today we're going to take it apart and we're going to use it on our current project. This is just a safety strap. We remove this safety strap then walk away with the drill and now I can take this drill and use it out in the field it's that easy and we're gonna drill right through this heavy material now I could do this by hand using a regular drill but I'm actually gonna use a mag drill to do this that way I know that the holes perfectly straight through and I can start with a large bit I can go right from a half inch bit right at the very beginning and as an added benefit, I just added a clamp just because there isn't a whole lot of material for this magnet to be grabbing. Yeah, just like that. Now you want this line right here is parallel as you can 
to the tailgate so that way it's tracking correctly so you can see probably right about there looks pretty good I think right there that looks to be like right in line with it this camera is tough as nails it it's literally blown off the stand three times today now we'll just tighten this down with an adjustable going just a little yeah that looks pretty good I think like that I'll give it a try make sure there's no binding before we do the other side oh yeah boy that's nice guys Yep. Can't ask for much more than that. All right, let's go do the other side. Like I say, because this, you know, this magnet's like four inches thick, and the material that we're um, sticking the magnet to is only two, it doesn't have a, a super tight um, grip like it normally would. So I'm just putting a, a C clamp on it, just as an added uh, added measure. And you always use the strap. You know, if anything should happen, if uh, you know, you're on a job site and somebody cuts a breaker or you're using this tool and you trip a breaker. If you lose your magnet, the tool's going to come crashing to the ground. So you always use the safety strap, always. And if you guys are wondering what I'm using for cutting fluid, uh, I'm using a Napa bottle, but it's actually the Evolution um, cutting fluid and I dilute it with water. You know guys, and that's just one of the great things about this tool is that you know that this is, you know, boring a nice straight hole all the way through and it's effortless. You know, if you were doing this with a hand drill, you would be struggling, but because you can put a lot of pressure against this, you can start out with a with a bigger bit. I know I said earlier that it's nice to step it and it saves the bits and it does. When you need to, you can just go right to the hole. Now I'll turn off my magnet and then this unit will start to drop. There it goes. And now I'll just loosen the strap and lower it down to the ground. Now we can install this one. It's super windy today. I told the customer I'd put a little bit of paint on this so it doesn't rust, but I'm not gonna be able to spray paint it. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to just brush it on using some um, Rust-Oleum. And some of you may say, well, the trailer's all rusty anyways. Why, why would you care? Because the trailer does have a considerable amount of rust on it, but this isn't about what they brought you. This is about you doing your work. And uh, when you do stuff, you always try to do it the best you can. And a coat of paint just kind of is the finishing touch, and those are the details that matter, in my opinion. Might take a couple extra minutes, but it's well worth it. And when you do these fine little details, You'll be known for that. And people, believe it or not, not everyone really will appreciate that, but the clientele that you're looking for, they will appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. This thing is installed, everything except for paint. Get my tools put away and get this thing wrapped up. All right, here we go. One finger, guys. That's it. Pop it up. You could pop it up with your foot. Grab it with your hand. Perfect. If you got a bad back or any issues, or I mean, as we get older, 
When you're younger, this probably wouldn't be a big deal, but as you get older, you appreciate these things. This is nice. Yep. This is a nice kit. I'm impressed. Yeah, and the customer should like it too. Good. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Now on to the next job. New videos every Friday. I will see you next week. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Till next Friday, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, God bless.